Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry, and I'm a Dynasty brand specialist, and I have got to show you these new amazing brushes they've come out with called Water Lily. I'm going to show you some basic strokes that you can do with these, and then you can take your imagination from there. So first of all, I just love the beautiful new color of the handle and the hairs, and their performance is fantastic. So let me show you what you can do with them. This is the Dynasty Water Lily Round Brush, and I used it to paint the entire poppy I'm going to show you some basic strokes that you can do with this brush. So to start with, I'm just going to load it with any color that sounds good. Okay, now this, this brush does hold a lot of fluid paint and it's got a very nice tip so when you pull down on the very tip I can get a nice line with it so I can get broad strokes with it as well so when I'm creating like a petal I can kind of outline it if I want rinse it and then just kind of take that tip and kind of wash away that little line so I can get my little detail very nicely with the tip of this brush so that it doesn't look quite so outlined. And then just pull down in the direction that the vein lines of the petal would be. So, great brush for, for adding all your little details as well as some of your bigger strokes. And then just kind of tap the tips with a little bit of water so that they blend nicely. So, beautiful, beautiful round brush. There we go. So, and I like that I'm able to go from the very fat to very thin within my strokes, whether I'm doing petals or leaves. It's, you can do a lot with just this one brush. So I could be doing some longer leaves. Or I could be doing just some little short ones. So very, very versatile, very fun brush. And that's the Water Lily Round. Next I'm going to show you the Quill Brush. And it's similar to a round brush, but look at that nice, great, big, fat amount of hair that's up at the top of the hairs there at uh, up close to the ferrule. It really holds a lot of fluid paint so when you're working on a little bit larger, in fact let's get a larger piece of paper here too. Working on a larger surface, I'm going to, let's get some yellow this time. I can make great big fat strokes. It really holds a lot of fluid paint so I can go quite a while before I have to reload. And it also has a very fine tip. So if I go into my green here Load that up. See what a fine line I can get? So I can go from very broad to very thin. Get a little more paint on there. Create washes with it. So it really is 
a beautiful brush. Put a little bit of different color in there and go back in and just stroke some more color within that petal that I'm making. You can just have fun experimenting. Um, this would be great for within your scenery designs as well just because of the petals that you're able to pull with this. Um, so very broad, very thin, and that's the quill. Okay, next I'm going to show you the... Well, let's talk about both these brushes. One is a filbert, or one is an oval wash, and the other one is called a cat's tongue. Now they look similar. Okay, so the oval wash has more of a rounded tip on it, where the cat's tongue has a pointy tip. And there may be times where you need to use one over the other. So let's start with the oval wash and show you the strokes that I can make with that. Get some paint on it. So for that, I can do, there again, big broad strokes. I can do thin with the chisel of it, or go from one to the other. So, so very fat to very thin. Okay, now I'm using this more often when I'm trying to do rounded edges on things, whether it's a flower petal, if I were just to do a basic little shape of some flower petals here, and I want the rounded beginning on it, I'd be more likely to use the oval wash. Okay, but now if I want to try the cat's tongue, let me show you the difference in the strokes for that. And for that I'm going to use a different color so we remember which is which. So I'll get some green on here. Okay, so for this, see when I start how this has a pointy tip as opposed to the round tip with the oval wash. So there again, it just depends on the subject matter. And I can still get my thin lines. I can still go from very broad or very thin to very broad. So beautiful brush, holds a lot of fluid paint. So maybe I want to switch to this if I'm doing the leaves on a flower because it's already pointed so I don't have to really work as hard at it to get those pointy leaves. You basically almost just can set it down and see I can still get my thin lines. So that's the cat's tongue. Next I'm going to show you another kind of unique brush and that is a dagger. Now the dagger um, looks kind of like a knife, okay, and so it has a very nice chisel edge for cutting in. Okay, and let's do a different color. Let's use a little bit of blue this time. Okay, so for this one, first of all, I can do a lot, a lot of lines. Look at how thin of a line. It's, I'm using the cutting edge and I'm not putting any pressure down and look at how far I can go with all this paint on the brush. It really holds a lot of paint. Now I can keep going forever here just about. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, there again I can make nice great big long strokes. I can go fat to thin. So when I want longer, 
type of strokes I'd be more often to use this. So see I can start with the chisel and then lay it down flat or I can lay it down to begin with to get a broader stroke but I can make extra long strokes with this. So that is the dagger brush in the water lily. Okay next I'm going to show you um, I think I'll show you the script brush. Okay now the script brush is great for details and long lines. Let's do some pink again. So when you're doing your detail work, some people find it easier to go ahead and switch to the script. So you can do a lot of thin, you, and if you put pressure down, you can get a little bit fatter lines. Okay, but more detail with this, maybe adding your little sprinkle of dots. And there again, this really goes a long way. It holds a lot of fluid paint. So there you go. So that's the script brush in the water lily. Okay, another brush that I have would be the filbert. So let's take a look at that. Now the filbert brush is just kind of a smaller version of the oval wash. When you're working on smaller projects, I have a tendency to do a lot of flowers, but definitely uh, those of you that are scenery painters, hopefully you can see some of the things that you could adapt using these in your sceneries. So this makes pretty flower petals or anything rounded. It's just that this time I'm doing it smaller than I did with the oval wash. I'm going to turn this just to make it easier. Just making kind of a little stylized flower there. Maybe some little buds. Okay, and then you can do uh, there again a lot with this one brush. So I can come back and do you know, little stems and leaves so I can get my thin lines. And I can get petals, whether I want them to be. I can make the leaves either pointy, because I'm just kind of pulling on the chisel and then laying it down or applying pressure. Or I can use that round tip and make rounded strokes with it as well. Just setting it down I can get a variety of different shapes so it's just kind of fun playing with it. So basically Pull on the chisel edge for thin lines. Lay it down flat for broad lines. Lift so you get thinner lines. Or start on the chisel. Lay it down and lift again for varied. So there again, nice brush. Now I can go back into that center of that flower and add some more. And maybe this time I'm just going to use a little more on the chisel edge so I get a little bit skinnier strokes in there. Add some color into the bottom of each of those. 
rinse it out. Take just the clean brush and just kind of tap to get that to blend. And I could have switched to a round brush to get you know more detail in there too, but I just want you to know that these brushes are versatile so that you can do a variety. Let's tap in some in a center here. And if I get that a little bit wet, I can actually just go back in with a little piece of paper towel and just lift some of that color so I get a little bit more of a highlight in there. So that's your Filbert brush. There again, very versatile. Another brush is the angle. Now the angle brush can be used for a variety of, of things as well. Um, some uh, people are using it for getting color on just one corner, but let me show you first the strokes that you can make with this. So you can start with the chisel edge to get your thin lines. Lay it down flat to get your broad lines. Go from thin to thick. Okay, but one of the things that you could do with this, let's say you have an object that you're putting some color in. Okay, and I want it to be nice bold color on the one edge but I want it to blend in the other side so I'm going to rinse my brush and just have a little bit of water in it and just kind of lay it on the edge of that inside line or hard line that I want to kind of erase and just use the tip, the long tip to get that to blend just using water. So there again, another, another way to use it for blending as well as for filling in. Uh, you could also use it for some stylized uh, lettering. Let's give that a try. There you go. So just kind of play around with that, see what you can get. Let's try an O. So it's just a matter of holding the direction of the brush so that you're getting fat to thin. Let's make that a Q. How about that? All right, so that's the angle brush. And let's see, we need one more here and that is the big flat. Flat wash. Okay, now for the flat wash, um, a lot of times I'm using that to mainly wet my surface and apply large amounts of color. So let's start by really moistening this paper. Sometimes you're doing backgrounds or, or objects that you just really want that paint color to fade in or blend. So let's pick up some blue and look at how nice and smooth that blends. Just keeping it really wet. And then let's pick up another color to blend into that, maybe just some green. So, beautiful brush. It has a nice cutting edge. So let's do... Uh, I'll go back to the blue. Really keep it wet though. You want a lot of moisture in this brush. But it has a nice chisel edge for cutting into things. There may be times where you need to cut into an edge and pull some color. And then I can 
use just the wet brush to kind of blend it. But if you're doing uh, bigger work uh, where you are doing a little bit more of a stroke within whatever the design is, whether it's, you know, buildings and you're having to do windows or whatever, um, you know, you can pull these nice flat strokes. You can pull the chisel edge. You can go from thin to thick, back to thin again. So you just have to kind of play with it to see. But nice, great, big strokes with this. So that is the Water Lily Flat Wash. I hope you've enjoyed watching all the little demonstrations with the new Water Lily brushes. I know you're going to love them. Happy painting!